responsibility and braveness to do this. It was scary. Yeah, it was like being completely exposed. My work all of a sudden was out in the world in a really big way. It was a whole process of accepting our aging bodies and, and what, the, what is the definition of beauty. If I were 25 and had the perfect little body that our you know, culture uh, uh, aspires to or thinks that women are supposed to look like, I would have felt very differently. The hardest part for me was when people would make comments about Gail specifically. That just broke my heart. That was awful because I put her in this position. I couldn't take like two steps without somebody making some comment about that painting. Our bodies are gonna age and that's because we've lived hopefully a very full life. How is that not beautiful? That's, that's the most beautiful thing there is. And so I think that there's something absolutely that our culture needs to look at if we find aging and the signs of that on our body to be so terrifying. It is what makes us human. To me, what Aaliyah captured in that painting was our connection and our love. And it wasn't about my body. Is your body ugly? Is your body beautiful? Blah, 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 blah. It was about us. And um, so, yeah. You didn't come out of art school in 1980 wanting to be a portrait painter. It wasn't cool. There was the, the picture of me on the front page of this British newspaper, and it began to sink in. This was kind of a big thing. <laughs> Through the BP Portrait Award, I recovered confidence, which I lost for a long time. What's amazing thing is you can share stories of people that don't have the voice. يعني صورتني المرة ورسمتني وعالم كله شافوني على فيسبوك. Every painting anyone does is a self-portrait. So much of myself goes into it. It destroys me. Nothing is. No. Mamma mia. <laughs> I painted her to freeze time. At what point were you most tempted to give up? Never. <laughs> Never. It's one thing to make work in your studio and have maybe your classmates see it and your teachers see it, but then to have it be global, I think that really, yeah, I mean, it was, it was huge. I, I can't really imagine where my life would be if I didn't win the award. I'm still in awe of Gail's vulnerability and braveness to do this. My work all of a sudden was out in the world in a really big way. It was scary, yeah. It was like being completely exposed. If I were 25 and had the perfect little body that our culture thinks that women are supposed to look like, I would have felt very differently. I couldn't take like two steps without somebody making some comment about that painting. I felt really, really bad that I had put her in this position where she would, um, yeah, feel, feel this kind of pain, so that was, that was difficult um, and uh, definitely a process. Um, Did you feel guilty? Yeah, I, yeah, I felt, mm. I felt I guilty. Know felt <laughs> guilty. Yeah. But then I started to realize at least I was doing something important, we were doing something important, we were getting something out in the world that um, obviously was stirring some people's emotions. It felt like you were doing this real service to kind of flush out, you know, well, what is the definition of beauty? 
it felt healthy. And, and so I was glad to, you know, help serve that cause. I mean, it wasn't about my body. Is your body ugly? Is your body beautiful? Whatever, blah, blah. It was about us. And um, so, yeah. So today we've been doing the final day of judging for the BP Prize. We don't know anything about the artists, where they're from, their age. Uh, we judge the work solely on its merits. There are paintings that you, for whatever reason, you can't understand, you can't stop looking at. And you're like, I have no idea why this is arresting me, but it's just arresting me. No, it doesn't have to be that every aspect of every painting is crystal clear. You know, it's often the things you can't quite figure out where you think, I'd like to know more. I wish I knew more about this person. With the portrait of a refugee, I have a chance to share their story. People were asking me, who is that woman? We want to volunteer, maybe you can give me advice where to go. What's amazing thing is that it's not the art for art's sake. With it, you can share and tell the story of the people that otherwise may not be told. All of night fighting with guns and uh, bomb. All of night we can't sleep. All of time we see, uh, we feel knife and my 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 neck. تخذنا قرار منه ما هذا المجال لازم خلاص نطلع على أوروبا بعد ما صبرنا ثلاث أربع سنين. وأنا كنت حامل بابني أحمد كان بطني ست شهور. رحنا وصلنا على البحر وصلنا لهنيك حطونا بالبلم. نحن عالم كتير كله كبسونا هيك فوق بعض سحب عين سلاح بالزور طلعونا ومشونا ميت متر ميتين متر وأخد أولادي على التهلكة وزوجتي مثلا وهذا الشيء يعني كتير صعب مشينا البلم قد ما وطقيل بتلف اللف ما بتحسن تمشي البلم نصيح نعيط الولاد كله يبكل وي سيد توجادر we died in the sea, or we go to Europe. I don't know swimming here, she don't know. We have four child. يعني صورتني المرأة ورسمتني وعالم كله شافوني على فيسبوك وعم حسوا فيني مثلا أخذوني وصوروني
If I had to put anything I painted in front of this round of judges, I would just be crushed. We've been whittling down to the 40 or so works that will be included in the exhibition. And then of course next, what we'll be doing is deciding the first, second and third prize winners. Through the BP Portrait Award, I recovered confidence, which I lost for a long time. I painted whole my life. I, you know, just enjoyed painting when I was a child. In 1988, I was invited to a phenomenal exhibition in Seoul. After I saw all the amazing paintings from all around the world, and I found my painting on the wall, I suddenly realized how bad I was. I was struck in my head. The sky turned yellow and my legs were shaking like that. So I was just ashamed of myself after I saw my painting on the wall, so I just ran away. Since then, I stopped painting. I was paralyzed even in my dream, but even I couldn't hold brushes. I dreamt the same dream, it's a horrible dream, for 20 years. I wanted to run away, so I left everything behind and um, came to Ireland with my son. And one day I realized I was not having the same horrible dream anymore. I painted all day, every day. I painted my son. There is something special in young men. Before they fully enter their adulthood, it reflects the sense of insecurity that I had when I saw my painting. Sometimes he complained. Can you please stop painting me? She would come to me to ask how this looks. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, he's very good at art, actually. I think that part is something wrong. So is it? So I, I, she know, denies it at first. Yeah, yeah. yeah she first denies I it at know. first. No, and then it's not. <laughs> we fight. <laughs> this is, I was really worrying a lot about my future. Where do I go? What am I going to be? He has the same moment that I yeah. had when I was young. I'm more comfortable in the way of life now, but if I stand back and look at the painting, it sort of reminds me I was in that spot, and, <laughs> and here I am, yeah. and things are going to get better then, uh, from now on, so, yeah. yeah, I am very proud that she's actually finally getting a chance to do it, and that she's doing it very well, to be honest, so, yeah. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Carl. I wanted to let you know that you have been shortlisted for a prize. Oh, wow. So to be shortlisted is simply amazing. <laughs> Not finished. No. <laughs> oh, I found the rest. It's very exciting seeing the exhibition coming together. The whole of humanity is represented here. I think what it shows overall is that the art of portraiture is not dead. It's evolving all the time as the new generations pick up the subject. They're not established artists, all of them. Some of them are self-taught. So it's a wonderful platform to give artists a, a voice and to give them the opportunity to display their works in a national museum. Oh, hi. 
Mariah. Yeah, Mariah, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. So, um, I can't tell you which time. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um. All right, thank you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Cheers. All right, it's reason a bit. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> I submitted a painting to the BP Award of my friend Imara. It was probably one of the hardest paintings I've ever done because we were both so open. It was the most open I've ever been with a painting. Sitting for a painting is very similar to a therapy session in a way. You sit down one-on-one, -on -one, closed doors, and you just talk to each other. You see one another in your most vulnerable, your most impressive, your most pathetic states. You see all of it. The Mara was going through quite extreme ups and downs and I was in quite a depressive hole. The Mara was my only contact with reality, essentially. There's this idea that painting is really meditative. It's just complete rubbish. And I, for me, it's intensely stressful. You are just so unbelievably focused and intense in that moment. That act of discovery about yourself, about the person, about painting, about something within yourself, you know, all of these things, I genuinely believe come through the experience of painting. If it weren't for that painting, I think both of us would have done something stupid. And yeah, I think that that painting specifically saved us both at a very specific time. Yeah, it was, um, If you can really experience something that makes you feel like you have worth or value to such an extreme degree, even if it's just that one person who's there, then I feel like that's worth doing. Hi Carl, I wanted to let you know that you have been shortlisted for a prize. There are four prizes in total and I'm afraid I'm unable to let you know which one you have won as this will be announced at the award ceremony. The crown in that picture is achievement, titles, positions, all that, and the blurriness of the face is the troubles we feel as humans, and, and that those things don't really help us relieve those things. We're waiting for something to happen that we've maybe always dreamed of. Whether it's a relationship, it's uh, a new job, it's the new car, the new apartment, whatever it is. But then there's always something new and it doesn't, there, it, it never feels the way you thought it would because it seems we're hardwired to then want more. When you're done with a painting like that, you're blind. You cannot judge it and I finished it like half an hour before the deadlines. I was talking with my girlfriend and I was like, ah, oh, there's no point, uh, no, it's not working. She was like, Carl, send it right now. consiglio per dipingere in un altro modo a me a te mm. e come faccio quando me moro <laughs> she's my grandma Vincenza 
today is her birthday. She's 95, and she's the subject of my paintings, of my portrait. No, finito. No. Ah, quando è? Adesso ancora un po' di domande a me e poi ancora a te. Mamma mia. No, oramai mi sto per partire. The title of my painting is Quo Vadis. Where are you going? She always says, you know, tomorrow I will leave. And we said, where? Where are you going? Perché dici che domani te ne vai? Perché moro. Ma perché? Eh, perché l'età ci sta. Oggi dico, un giorno all'altro, Gesù mi chiama a fare le vacanze lontano. Non mi piace proprio, ci sarebbe ancora da stare un po' per non lasciare tutti i nipoti, i figli e tutto. I painted her to freeze time. So to be short is simply amazing. <laughs> but I'm never really happy. I need to make a better painting every time. I'm never satisfied. Never. Il successo però ti dà anche felicità? Ai figli più che mai, ai nipoti. La famiglia dei, dei, dei figli, i nipoti e tutta la gente che è brava. Portraits in this year's exhibition were selected from 2,538 entries from a total of 84 countries, making it truly global in scope. The winner of the third prize is Massimo Milano Pironti for his portrait Quavadis. <laughs> remembering what we went through to actually make this painting, but it makes you just really proud of Amara more than anything. I suppose proud of myself, but it's always harder for one to be proud of oneself. What I genuinely want is to be able to just get back to my studio and just keep painting like nothing's really happened, to be honest. I have closed doors to have peace and quiet, learn about myself, learn about other people, just make sure that life doesn't get in the way.